everybody. I am going to show a project today that I saw on the Creative Memories YouTube channel with Noreen Smith where she um, showed some cute page layouts with the Paw Punch which came out originally in 2018 and sold out at the time and then was so popular people requested it a ton to come back. So it's a, a tool that Creative Memories has recently brought back. I am going to modify my layout a little bit because I've also been playing with my new Kodak 3x3 printer. So the photos I have are a little bit smaller than the ones Noreen used on her layout. So I have pulled kind of a random smattering of stickers and papers and things that I had um, just in my stash. Most of it is pretty old. If you are looking for an advisor, I'm happy to help you out with that. And if you have any questions about the layout, email me or send me a message. Okay. Well, let me show you what I'm planning to work with tonight. Um, I really love these papers. They're from a collection from long ago with Creative Memories called Cherish. Um, they're double-sided. The back sides are kind of monochromatic. Looks almost like brushed linen and the, the front sides have some different patterns. I like these ones a lot. This is one of my favorite early collections from Creative Memories or earlier, but you'll see compared to the regular 12 by 12 papers, these papers are a little bit smaller. So back from the day when Creative Memories used to make what they called perfect fit size, when the album pages were a little bit smaller than a true 12 by 12. So I don't have any paper of this collection that's big enough to be a full 12 by 12 background. There are lots of ways to get around this if you want to, if you have some paper of this size and want to use it. But today I just decided I'm going to choose a different paper to be the full background. And then I'll use these for the rest of the layers on the layout. This piece of paper comes from another more recent but not very, very recent collection called Be Mine, B-E-E, -E, Mine. It was like a cutesy bee-themed Valentine collection. And then I've got some white cardstock as well. White cardstock is always current and available. For some stickers, um, I pulled, this was an advisor exclusive sticker sheet that we could get and give as a gift a little while ago. This one's a little bit older um, from a collection that I think was called Vintage back from the original power palette days and then one embellishment from um, a decor kit that came out quite a while ago I'm not sure which or if I will even use these things but I just grabbed some stuff that I thought looked nice together with the different colors from the papers and then I've got three pictures um, these are all printed on my little at-home Kodak photo printer that prints three by three squares and I'm going to start out by actually trimming these with my personal trimmer. When these are printed, and, and there are other printers that do kind of a similar thing, they have a little snap-off tab on the one side, but I prefer to trim it with my photo trimmer just because I want it to be a little cleaner. With the uh, snap-off edge, it, it leaves a little bit of like perforation, kind of not quite straight um, and the pictures I'm scrapbooking right now are when we <laughs> told <laughs> our two dogs that we were pregnant uh, earlier this year in 2023 we're having a, our first baby in November of 2023 so of course the dogs didn't really care they'll probably care more when the baby's actually here but uh, it was a fun way to kind of announce to friends and family that we were having a baby. When you're gutting your paper, the amount you want to cut out is kind of depends on how much you need left over. So on this one, I'm going to make my, my second layer 10 inches by 10 inches. And so I want to have a minimum of that one inch on each outside, but actually a little bit more of a buffer so that I can adhere the next layer down. And then start cutting at approximately one and a half. And 
you'll know where your blade is cutting based on where this little white line is. It actually cuts, I feel like, a little bit farther to the outside of where the line is. So I like to be a little conservative with that. We're gonna go in an inch and a half at least. I'm gonna go a little bit farther than that. Let's say start at two inches and try to end about two inches from the end of the paper. And it won't be perfect, most likely. It never is for me. Maybe for you it will be. But I find that I either overshoot it a little bit or I'm a little bit short. Looks like I overshot on this cut a little bit, but it's fine because it's gonna get covered up. So there we have it all cut out. And here you can see it doesn't matter in this case because I'm gonna um, cover the, those corners up. <clears throat> but I, I did it a little bit farther than the actual corner where those meet up. And it looks like, <laughs> I think on this last side, I went a little bit short. So if that's the case, I can show you how I fix that later. So I'm just try to make sure I'm cutting all the way to the line or very close to it if I can. Okay, so on this corner, I think we pretty much matched up. Yep, looks like it's all detached. On this corner, it's a little shy. I, I didn't cut it quite far enough. So when that happens, I just use my scissors, snip that off. And you could also line your paper trimmer back up to, to fix that. So this is just an extra cute little piece of Tiny Hearts, which I, I just love this paper. It's so cute. Um, this is now gonna become our background, or at least our bottom layer of the background. So we're done cutting this one. And then I said we're gonna do our next layer to be 10 by 10. I'm pretty sure I wanna use this layer, or this paper as the next layer. There's the back side of that. I'm gonna also gut this paper. But before I do that, I wanna start by cutting it to its outside size. And let's see, I think I really like this little corner of the paper, so I wanna make sure that is included in the layout. Okay, and I have that all the way to 10 inches here. inches over here and again I want to keep that corner I just really like that part of the design and now we've got our 10 by 10 square and I'm gonna do essentially the same thing I just did but I'm gonna leave the border a little bit smaller so on this one we did an inch and a half which will nicely accommodate this 10 inch square and give us enough area that we can still adhere everything down um, we're going to go a little bit less of a border on this one because the next layer is going to be, um, it's not going to have as much space on the sides. So I'm just measuring out to one inch now. And by the way, one inch is about the length on your trimmer from the white line to the edge. So if you have it about lined up with the edge, and then stop at the edge of the paper. That'll be about an inch. And I'm just not gonna be super, super picky and precise since this is gonna get covered up and I can just trim any little short spots with my scissors. So one inch all around. And then I have quite a bit of this paper, which I will be using for some other things on other parts of the layout. Let's see. So I'm a little short on the cut right here. And also on this side. Okay. So those are our first two layers. Ooh, I'm stuck. 
and I'll just I'll fiddle with that a little bit and decide how I want to get that all laid down and since we did the one inch um, gutting <laughs> right here what we end up with is 10 inches on the outside and the inside square is eight inches which means we want our next layer to all together cover up at least eight inches And for our next layer, I'm going to use some of the back of this paper that we just cut. So some of this kind of reddish burgundy. And we're going to do some squares. Um, when you watch Noreen's videos, you'll see that she did her squares five inches each, which will be 10 inches total. But since this piece is 10 inches, we're actually going to aim a little bit smaller. I'm going to go to four and a half inches for my squares which will take us out to nine inches and um, between all those pieces, they should fit together pretty nicely. So let's see. Four and a half for this one. And if you want to continue gutting even these smaller pieces, you definitely could, but I am not going to. Let's start putting these pieces together um, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do on the back of these to make sure they're not all flopping around. So I'm just using my regular tape runner for this stuff. Um, I generally don't use a ton of tape runner when I'm putting pieces together like this, but because these are a little more floppy, less stable, this is probably more. Like I can, I'm using more on this than I maybe would otherwise. And we're gonna line it up so it's pretty good and centered in here. The rows of hearts, just the way they're laid out on this paper help me to do that because I can see um, when, it's, when it's centered or crooked based on if my hearts are showing in like straightish lines. That looks pretty good. Okay, so those two layers are down. Now we're gonna put these ones down. I think I liked this setup. And so obviously there's nothing in the middle of this paper behind them to adhere to. So we're just gonna wanna do the adhesive on the outside edges. They're gonna touch uh, the hollowed frame that we already have. So our corners in here are just free floating right now. And I don't really want that because it's gonna make it hard for me to put all my other stuff together. So I'm just gonna take a scrap of something we just cut and um, just attach it in the middle so it holds all those things in place. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of tape on all those pieces. And sometimes in the project recipes, when they're doing something like this, they will call it a welding piece where you're like welding everything together from the back side. Um, so that's basically what I just did. I just made the center of this more stable so it's not all crazy while I'm trying to put everything else down. 
The next thing we're going to do is mat all of these. And the photos are three by three. The squares here are four and a half by four and a half. And so I'm going to do something in between. I'm not going to go exactly halfway because I don't really want it to be so matchy matchy like that. Plus I'm going to use white for that um, photo background. So I'm going to go a little closer to the three and do a three and a half inch square for each of those. And that'll give us a bigger border of the patterned paper and a smaller border around the photos. Other thing that the main thing across this page is actually going to be a bunch of paw prints. So I'm going to punch those out now. That little scrap is just a bit too small. Set this aside while I'm doing the paw prints. And what I liked about the layout that Noreen did and why I wanted to try it was because she talks about how this type of punch is almost like cutting out something on your Cricut as a cut file. And you can fill in the void spaces with some of your colors and patterns from your other papers in your layout. So I like that idea, and I was gonna try that with these. Um, let's see. Let's start with six, and then we'll go from there. I can punch out some more if I want to. A little punch junk that came out. The shapes on the the inverse, like the the trash part of the punch shape could easily be put together in the little paw shape. So that's another thing I've seen people do. They'll use this as a pattern and they lay out their little scrap pieces um, to be a cute little paw print also. So if that's an, something you want to do, um, that's a cute way to use your additional pieces from this punch. So that, that's a really cute little different style of paw. And what we're going to do on this one is fill in the blank space with some of our scraps from the papers we were using in other spots. Um, so we didn't really use this in the layout, but I think it would be just fine to use uh, in our paw backgrounds. And I am going to use a repositionable tape runner for this one because with the little more delicate pieces, um, it's nice to nice to be able to just rub off any extra adhesive that you don't need. So anywhere that's showing through, the repositionable tape just rubs right off. And all we're doing really at this point is just trimming off the extra freehand if you wanted to like punch out some hearts to begin with, a heart is a good shape to start backing this with. And maybe you won't have to do so much hand trimming. But I'm just using my regular all-purpose Creative Memory scissors. Um, you could use the microchip scissors, which are, would probably be better for this because they maneuver a little bit better. But the scissors of any kind really could get the job done. It's just a matter of <laughs> maybe how much uh, effort you need to put into it with your scissors. Okay, so that's what they're going to look like. The little white outline with a background of one of the colors that we're using of the fronts and backs of the papers. I'm going to do the rest of these so you don't have to watch me cut out all of these in real time.